Alright, so I'm using these balancing beads. I go online, you can find these charts that tell you what size tire you have, how many ounces of beads. And usually they come in a two bags. I almost need your glasses. Hmm. And then there's a lighter bag inside, much thinner plastic. You take that one. And I forgot to put these in this one. So I gotta push the bead down in the center to see if I can get it in there. Normally I put these in the tire before I before I mount it. But not you this wanna time. get your bar and pry it up a little no. bit? Okay. No. Okay. It's in there. Make sure it's not pinched. Okay. Now that's in there. Now we're gonna get my air tank right here. Fill her up. Right up to about 120, you can see how it turns green. Right to the caution line. And then take our air fitting here, put it on the tire. These little tires don't seem to air up real well. Sometimes you can shake it, roll it, and get it started. Other times it won't. Oh, look at that! Oh yeah, that one did go. Hey, look at that. It did make it. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to do valves a little bit. This wheel turned out better than it looks, but I end up scratching it, moving them around. So we may have to still do a little something. Put a new valve core in them. Um, a lot of times I'll replace the the whole valve stem it just depends these are metal they're bolted in and the rims kind of rusty so I don't really want to pull it it create a bigger problem it gives us grief we'll deal with it I've had a lot of people give me grief about airing tires up like this tell me that you know, it's dangerous. The bead can go past the rim, and it can. It's very, very rare. I mean, most of the time you see that's on like a split rim or a locking rim, locking bead type wheel. Not so much on these. What'd you put the last one at? 60. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna get this one done, and we'll check them for leaks. I use soapy water around the bead and the valve stem. Usually I check them for leaks around the valve stem before I take them apart too, so I know if we need a new one or not. We may still repaint this wheel. I don't know. You ever do something so dumb that you're embarrassed to tell anybody that you did it? That's today. I'm sitting here trying to get my Milwaukee grease gun primed, and I'm struggling. I can't get the air out. In my mind, the last time I used this, I put a new tube in it. Yeah, well, apparently, between the time I put a new tube in it, and now I've used it and emptied it. coming out. The Suzu has done an updated top seal. It's actually a seal with a washer and a nut. Before it was very small and didn't seal very well. This should probably help fix this problem because the seal they had before was less than fantastic so I'm gonna get this tightened up and we'll go back together the 
see that's a step bolt. It's obviously meant the bottom out. Alright, so put the tie rod back in while it's still kind of open. Sometimes these will want to spin. The tie rod will want to spin inside the knuckle. I just take a bottle jack go underneath it. If there's no grease fitting, I can just go flat. If there is a grease fitting, put a sock over it. Push up on it, give it some tension. And then tighten it down and put a new powder pin in. Alright, so it's very important to make sure this hub is clean all the way around so you can get that rotor down on snug. Clean up the bolts, clean up the threads with a tap. I take the bolts of the wire wheel, put some red Loctite on them, get them down in there, get them started. And, uh, then we'll torque them down, kind of like a wheel. We're going to go in a star pattern. I'm sure there's a uh, torque spec on this. You know, you should probably look that up and figure out what it is. I tried to get these original rotors machined, but uh, the only people that can machine them could do it once you took the rotor off. Well, if I'm going to take the rotor off, I'm, I'm not going to machine it and put it back on. I'm just going to buy new. The old ones had never been machined. Alright, so the camera shut off. But I went ahead and tightened up the bolts, torqued them down that hold the rotor to the hub. I installed the new races, inner and outer, and then I took the brand new bearings and I hand packed them with this red uh, wheel bearing grease. After I hand packed them, <clears throat> I put them in. Now I'm, I'm doing a little trick here. This wheel seal has what's called a garter spring on the inside. Right there, you can see it right in here. And what that does is that holds tension on the spring against the spindle. The machine part of the spindle so what i'm doing is i'm putting grease in here and packing it in all the way around so when i install the grease seal into the hub and i'm tapping on it that grease is supposed to help keep that uh garter spring from popping out of there because if it pops out well you know obviously you're not going to have any as much tension on your your machine surface of the hub now drive that thing in I'm just going to use one of these discs. This is just nothing more than a piece of aluminum, you know, cut into a disc. I'll lay it on top of there and tap it in. Distinct tone change once the uh, the seal bottoms out. I'm sure you can hear that. Alright, a little bit on here. Apparently I got a little bit on there. We don't want that. I will clean this again before we put brake pads on so don't get excited but I'm gonna pack the outer wheel bearing now and uh, then we'll go ahead and put it together but you can see what I'm doing here I just grab a little bit of that take it in my hand and I'm trying to shove it up through there and I'll grab that grease and pull it back so I can see what's actually happening I don't I don't want to just cover this I want to make sure it's coming up through the rollers and squeezing out that's what I'm after and I won't move this roll it until I'm happy that it's squeezing out I know a bearing packer would be so much easier, so much faster. Okay, that's that one ready to go. So we are effectively ready to put the rotor on. Well, let's go do that. I suppose 
Next, we ought to put the housing back on for the brake caliper. I suppose I better get my Loctite put on this too. I'm having one of those days. Doesn't matter what I seem, what I'm trying to do. Doesn't want to seem to cooperate. off from all the rust dust. This is the ceiling surface or the inner wheel seal rides. So we'll clean this off. Clean all the crud off the spindle. Add some Grease to this, just to the edge is what I'm after, so that when we put the seal on it doesn't tear. It's a very tight fit. In case you didn't, in case you didn't see, I did put grease on that inner race. All right, there is a torque sequence to this. You tighten it up to a torque spec and you spin it. Back it off till it's loose. Spin it some more. And what I'm telling you right now is just how I do it. You should probably look at a service manual. Yeah, there's no lateral movement. And I'm gonna back it off between a quarter and an eighth. I want it to spin freely, and I don't want to feel any play. I'm going to find where the keyway lines up, the closest. The slot for the cotter pin, I believe, is right in this area. I think I'm going to have to go. If I have to go looser or tighter, it's a judgment call, depending on how tight it is. Let's see. Looks like it's right behind here, and I can't go that tight. That's too tight. So we're going to go back it off. There it is. There it is right there. Okay, so my cotter pin is obviously too long. Not a big deal. You know, cotter pins have one leg longer than the other. I just pulled one out, spry it out a little bit, come in here, cut it off. And do the same thing on the other leg. Still making one longer than the other. And if it's still too long, we'll cut more. I guess we're okay. And I'll turn them. Short part on the bottom, 
grab the top. Bottom. I take the, the top one, and I like to hold the, the cotter pin like so, and then bend that over. And take the bottom one and make sure it's not going to hit that washer when I bend it. I don't want it to come in contact with that washer. I'll hold the end of the cotter pin like so. Bend it over like that. That's the way I do it. Check the wheel again. Make sure it's got good and tight. Feels good. Clean, clean the lip of this real good, this dust cap, so it'll go in. Start it like so. turn, make sure it looks the same, looks the same to me. Alright, now we're ready for the caliper bracket, which is this, if you guys saw I already cleaned it up with a file and what have you, oops, so this is going to go in like this. bolts are right here. They've been cleaned. A red thread locker on that won't hurt. Sometimes figuring out these pieces of hardware is like a jigsaw puzzle. Use some of this purple lube on the slides. Here comes our thunderstorm they were talking about. you look at that? How nice was that? I am not replacing the calipers on this because the pistons went in just fine. So we are going to reuse the calipers. Let's see how that works for us.
Happy with the brakes now. Now we're going to work on some shocks. It's got a stud like this. I take it to the wire wheel, clean the paint off. Makes it install so much easier. I'm working on shocks that have a top mount like this. I'll glue the wire wheel, clean the paint off. Makes it so much easier to get the, the bolt tight. I'll leave that little strap on there, but it needs to be down below that shoulder. Now this one has a bracket for the ABS wire right here. So we have to make sure we get it in the right place. So washer, bushing, this is going to go through the steel mount at the top. And then another bushing, washer, and a nut. Okay, next thing we do, we're going to cut this loose down here. I'm going to let the shot go, shove it on. It's a gas shock, so it's uh, not exactly the easiest to compress. Goes in the way. This is a tough part about putting your tools away in between jobs. <clears throat> So now this ABS wire that I currently have twisted up, fantastic, is supposed to go that way. I just put that on backwards. It's supposed to go over here. Genius, genius, genius. Perfect. Just perfect. ABS wire is meant to go right here. I need to go clean this up. We'll never seize this bolt. So it doesn't break off in the shock. The next time it has to come apart. been one of them days. Those who are gonna ask, yes, I won't I will not forget the Titan the top of the shock. Okay. Tighten the top of the shock. We're going to stick the wheel on. This side's done. We'll go to the other side. Okay, let's go to the other side. 